Hi YouTube world. Um, I wanted to make another video. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to talk again about something else that I think is important and that is um, not talked about as much as it should be and <clears throat> And I just wanted to make this video again in case, you know, somebody out there can relate to what happened to me and hopefully this might help you. And um, basically what I'm talking about is domestic abuse. And <clears throat> the reason that I wanted to talk about this is um, when I was younger, I was in... A relationship that was very unhealthy I was <clears throat> it was my relationship before I met my husband and basically uh, I had met my ex-boyfriend um, when I was in college and I was a freshman um, so I was 19 years old um, and I hadn't been in a whole ton of, like, serious relationships. It was one of my first serious relationships. Um, I had dated a lot, um, you know, when I was a teenager. But it was, it wasn't, you know, we'd date for, like, a couple months or something. Or, you know, I'd, I would dance with them at, like, the skating rink. Like, nothing, <laughs> nothing, um... No, like, serious where I was living with them or anything like that till I met my ex. And so, um, I, I just wanted to make this video to warn other girls so that they don't either get in a relationship where it's abusive or if they are, that they get out. Um, so basically, yeah, I met my ex-boyfriend when I was in college and um there was red flags right off right off the beginning um that I that I chose to ignore so for instance um uh I had met him online and through Facebook at the time it was like the only social media back then but uh, when I one of the first times that I met him in person, uh, we were hanging out with like a bunch of friends, um, and we were hanging out like outside the dorms, and we're all just like chit chatting or whatever. And he got really angry at something stupid. I don't remember what it was, but he stormed off like in a huff and wouldn't come back to talk to me and. Um, all my friends were like, what the heck, you know? And, um, I just was like, oh, it's fine, it's fine. And I just kept chasing him, even though, like, I kept following him. I mean, not chasing, but kept following him and was like, you know, I'm sorry. Um, what's going on, da, da, da. And <clears throat> all my, I remember my best friend at the time was like, you shouldn't put up with that, and da, 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 da. And, um, <clears throat> and so that was probably the first red flag right there. Like, people telling me, my friends, um, telling me that, like, he shouldn't be treating me in such a way or <clears throat> that behavior, you know, wasn't, wasn't cool. And I just remember thinking at the time, like, oh, well, if this is the worst thing, that he does and it's okay <clears throat> which yeah everybody gets angry sometimes but to get that angry at that at something so little it wasn't okay but in my head I just rationalized oh it's okay because I grew up um in a dysfunctional family and um used to dealing with angry people um uh, <clears throat> And that's not okay. Just because I was raised that way, I guess I tried to rationalize it. Like, I was used to growing up with fighting and kind of always being the peacemaker. And, um, 
I was used to, like, people being enraged, enraged for, like, no reason. So I was like, oh, it's okay. I know how to deal with this. Um, <clears throat> so, <clears throat> um, that might be a sign to, uh, if your significant other is getting really angry for some, something really small sets them off, that's a red flag. But also, just be cognizant that if you're also trying to rationalize in your head, like, oh, this is okay because I was raised, um, you know, my parents were always angry at me or whatever, then that's, that's not... <laughs> That's um, a warning sign for yourself that you might have your own issues that you need to be aware of, like that you're um, basically trying to rationalize other people's bad behaviors, and we shouldn't do that. Um, <clears throat> if somebody has a bad behavior, you shouldn't just put up with it because, oh, you're used to being abused or in an unhealthy environment. Um, so anyways, so then, uh, after that, um, you know, I guess we got past, past that little, like, tiff or whatever, but I remember, like, my best friend, um, she would constantly bring to my attention, like, any time he would kind of flip out for no reason after that, um, and I remember, like, <clears throat> just always kind of just rationalizing it and eventually me and that friend my best friend at the time we had a falling out um not just because of that but other reasons as well and um that's also another red flag that you should or not red flag but another thing you should be looking out for is if you don't have a lot of good friends and um and if you, if you have, like, a best friend and you kind of have a falling out and then you don't have people to turn to, that's something else you should be on the lookout for because you're more at risk, I think, to then fall into an unhealthy relationship because you don't have somebody kind of being the voice of reason or looking out for you other than yourself. <clears throat> so... Anyways, so then me and that friend had, like, a falling out, um, somewhat because of him. I think that was, like, the last straw, but, um, other reasons as well. But anyway, she did not like him, and looking back, um, she was correct in being worried. At least that part of why we had a falling out was legitimate, and, um... I understand now she was just trying to look out for me in that sense and that you shouldn't, you know, end a friendship over, over something um, like that. But anyways, so the relationship continued and um, I was maybe um, getting more isolated because, you know, me and my best friend had a falling out and I didn't really then hang out with a lot of the friends that... Um, that, that were, like, mutual friends between me and the best friend, and, uh, me and the, me and my ex wound up actually moving in together, and we moved in together after only a couple months, which I don't really recommend, because, uh, while I do believe in moving in together before marriage, after, or some, some, you know, um, I don't think, sorry, I don't think that moving in after only a couple months is a good idea because you don't really know the person that well. And, um, while well, I do, you know, recommend moving in before marriage just so you guys get a better idea of each other before you get married and your, like, habits and everything, um, after only a couple months, that's kind of like, you're still in the honeymoon phase and you don't really know each other that well and it's a little bit risky. Um, 
like for me it didn't really work out well because <sighs> while I knew he had a temper I didn't realize like how bad it was until we were living together and by that point you're kind of like it's it's harder to get out of the relationship once you're living together because you might be on a lease together um, you might have like uh, furniture together or, like pets whatever the case may be but it just gets more complicated um, so we moved in together after only a couple months and there was kind of red there was kind of a lot of red flags as far as his temper was just really bad and um, it just kept escalating and it got to the point where I couldn't just keep making excuses for him anymore and um, what I'm talking about is uh, he would do things like <clears throat> like, um, push me, um, pinch, like, pinch me, sometimes he would bite me, uh, things that aren't like, oh, he beat me up and gave me a black eye, like, things that other people might not s see, but are still abuse, and, um, if you find yourself in a relationship, sorry, if you find yourself in a relationship where somebody isn't, you know, necessarily slapping you but they're doing something that's still physically abusive or violating it's not okay and um for a while I think I just told myself oh it's okay because he's not you know he's not giving me a black eye and he's not like knocking me unconscious so it's not abusive no you can still be being abused even if um, they're not leaving, like, a bunch of scars or whatever. Somebody shouldn't be putting their hands on you, period, um, without your consent. And especially in, like, a violent way. <clears throat> so, I remember one time he, like, actually left a lot of bruises on me because he was, like, biting me. And he was, like, trying to say, oh, it's, like, play biting or whatever. <sighs> but it's, I was still, like, you know, cut it out. Like, I mean, it's just weird. And I remember, like, kind of, like, laughing, but kind of, like, cut it out. Like, what are you doing? Like, stop. And he just kept doing it. And then I went to work, and I had uh, the uniform at work was, like, short sleeves. So I, it actually left bruises on my arms and I remember like a bunch of my coworkers being like, what, what happened? I remember trying to like explain it to them and then being like, what? And I remember just like being really embarrassed and trying to kind of, <clears throat> kind of trying to like rationalize it to them, which made no sense at all, but I guess... I had been rationalizing, like, his bad behavior for so long that that's just what I did. And, um, I remember, like, my manager being like, Kim, that's not okay. Like, I'm really worried about you and da-da-da. Um, I remember getting, like, emotional and, like, almost tearing up, like, realizing, like, hmm, maybe this isn't okay seeing other people's reactions but eventually I just told him like I went home talked to him was like don't do that again and then of course like a lot of people when you're in a abusive relationship the person then will be like oh yeah I'm so sorry like it won't happen ever again and they'll try to act like they're gonna change um and that's what he he led me to believe and that's the reason why a lot of people stay in terrible abusive relationships because after the abuse happens the person um tries to make it tries to downplay it uh, I think it's called gaslighting like they try to change like what actually happened the story the story of what happened um and they also try to make try to make it seem as though everything's going to be better and they're going to be this amazing person and you know if you guys can just get through this you can get through anything 
and all this like abusive crap basically anyways um <laughs> sorry anyways so yeah so then um the abuse just kept happening and it kept happening more frequently uh, which always seems to be the pattern with abusive relationships um, and I think I was just kind of waiting for him to do something really terrible like knock me down the stairs or something for me to leave <sighs> which is terrible like why does it have to be them doing something that's that's so bad that you'll never come back from like that they really harm you like no it should just be bad enough that they're touching you in a way that you don't want to be touched that you should leave not like oh I'll wait till I'm till they break my arm or something like no if you're in an abusive relationship get out because <clears throat> what I'm trying to explain in this video is basically it's just going to keep going it's going to get worse it's going to happen more frequently and they're going to they're going to keep pushing um, the boundaries as far as they can go. Um, I also remember a time when, I'll tell you a couple other times, like, that he was physically abusive. Okay, so another time that was not okay, um, he got really angry and flipped out at me because I was falling asleep and he was watching a movie at, like, three or four o'clock in the morning and he wanted me to stay awake with him well you know what I was in college I was exhausted and I started falling asleep and he kept pushing me like wake up um and I would just like wake up for a minute and then start falling asleep again so he actually pushed me so hard um finally because he got so mad he pushed me off the bed and I wound up like doing a somersault and then landing and hitting my head on like furniture. <sighs> and it seems so much worse to like explaining what he's done. But at the time you try to rationalize it. Um, because I think a lot of people who are abused have tried rationalizing other people's like abusive behaviors for so long. That then when they're in an abusive um, adult relationship they don't realize what they're doing um that's abusive to themselves like trying to rationalize someone who's abusive their behavior um and I mean he did a lot of stuff like that that I just told you um but just enough where I think he thought I wasn't going to leave him. But he also was like uh, emotionally abusive um, as well. But I think, I don't know, just over, we were together almost three years. And over the years, like, I started getting more and more fed up. And then one time when he, he like smacked, he smacked my leg. Um, a couple times when we went to, we went to a fast food restaurant and I guess he was trying to like rip them off by not giving them the coupon that he had because he wanted to keep using it and I think I like gave it to them so he started smacking my leg and um, <clears throat> where was I going with this? Um, Yeah, anyways, that's another time he did that, but another, like, physically abusive time. But getting back to the emotional abuse, um, he would do a lot of things that were emotionally abusive, like he would storm off and abandon me in, like, stores and try to I guess kind of intimidate me like by like abandoning me in a store if he was mad um he like one time he was he was trying to like do some kind of scam at Walmart and I guess I wasn't gonna be part of that so he wound up storming off storming away from me and um 
he wouldn't like talk to me that night and he didn't come back to the car for like an hour but he would do that a lot like the storming away <clears throat> but eventually got to the point where um I guess one of the breaking points was <laughs> on one of my birthdays he um didn't call me or text me or anything and I actually had to work on my birthday so I remember being at work and like telling co-workers I was upset that like my boyfriend didn't even call me or anything for my birthday and they were like Kim like what kind of boyfriend is this and <laughs> and they were like think about think about your relationship and maybe like make a list and make a list of the pros and cons because it sounds like they don't care so after getting after um and while sorry while I was still at work I actually did call him because I was mad and I was like why didn't you call me or text me or anything on my birthday? And he said, we were like going back and forth and he was like, I don't know. And then he goes, well, who would want to, who would want to call you anyways on your birthday or something mean like that? And that was like, I got really upset after that. And that was when I went to my coworkers and then they were like, who, like, what kind of, what kind of guy are you dating? Like, make a list so you can, like, you know, be logical and think about your relationship. So, I recommend if if you're relating a lot to the story and um, you're with somebody who's either emotionally abusive, like I said, like the storming off and abandoning you a lot, or um, or physically abusive, whether it's just, like, something you think is small, like, oh, they just pinch me when they want me to be quiet in public or oh they've pushed me into the wall a couple times <sighs> stop like belittling it that's abuse number one number two make a list of um the pros and cons of your relationship because a lot of times when we're in abusive relationships we're not thinking logically we're thinking emotionally we're thinking like oh but I just love him and everything will be okay and um especially you know after the makeup period you might be like intimate or whatever so you're not thinking clearly you're you're thinking like emotionally and so I recommend writing a list because once I did that I was able to look at my relationship like objectively and see like wow there's a lot of cons there's a lot of incidences he's done um that were like bad like um <sighs> like pushing me into a binder on the floor or or just um you know calling me this name or calling me that or um just not <sighs> not being nice to people like servers which I know that seems stupid but I was a server for years so that really like gets under my skin but anyway um it was just like when I looked at it I remember there were like pages of like cons and so <laughs> it kind of made it like pretty obvious I couldn't be rationalizing um anymore like it made it very clear like oh wow there's a lot of uh things he does that are not okay <clears throat> so anyway, once I did that, I was able to, like, finally kind of tell him, like, hey, this is enough. Like, this is the camel, the straw that broke the camel's back was my birthday, and now I've had time to think about things. And I've actually, like, looked at things kind of clearly, um, and I told him that he needed to change, like, go to therapy or, or something, or we weren't going to be together. And, um, I remember, too, like, throughout this time period, my family, you know, they did not like him, and they told me several times, you know, I needed to, to, like, end things and all this, because they would, they would get the calls when I was, like, crying and upset, but I remember I kind of was just, like, whatever, like, 
because then we'd make up and I would think everything's fine again. So, and also my family, sometimes they, they don't like anybody who I date or don't think anybody's like good enough. So I kind of was just like, oh, they don't know what they're talking about. But eventually, if it gets to the point where everybody is telling you, who are you dating? Like, why are you dating this person? That you, you need to listen because it wasn't just my family who, yes, sometimes they can be a little bit biased, but I had friends who didn't like him. I had coworkers who didn't like him. Like, there was a lot of people who were just like, I had strangers come up to me in like grocery stores when he was acting inappropriate and be like, I really hope that isn't your husband. That's a huge red flag. If you have strangers, people who, who have no, there's no gain for them telling you, um, that your partner is bad. There's no, there's no interest or like, um, motive underneath that. They just, they just recognize something's wrong and they're telling you that, then you need to listen. Okay, so anyways, after all this happened, um, uh, my ex did not change. He would repeatedly tell me that he was going to change. Um, you know, especially when I told him, you know, this is it, I'm done. You, uh, he kept insisting, insisting, I mean, he could make the best, like, speech or whatever, um, but you need to look at a person's actions. Are they just constantly saying they're gonna change, and then they don't do anything, like, they don't go to therapy, they don't go to, like, AA or whatever if they have a substance abuse problem, which he also had, he also had some issues with that, which, again, that's another, that's another thing you need to look for because if somebody's using substances a lot, they're probably not going to always be acting like rationally. <clears throat> Anyways, um, yeah, so you need to look at if somebody's actually doing things to improve. Like, are they yelling at you less? Are they, um, are they like, doing things special for you to make up for for what they've done and I don't mean like buying you things because anybody can buy you stuff but I mean like spending time with you um telling you that you're special like things like that um and then like are they actually do you see improvements in their temper are they like you know, researching ways to be more calm, like, are they actually doing these things, or are they just saying they're gonna do these things? That's what you need to be looking for. <clears throat> so, anyways, my ex, actually, we wound up breaking up eventually, and it was one of the hardest things that I've ever had to do, and I'm not saying it's not gonna be hard, because it is. Um, I think they say statistically it takes a woman like seven times, or a man, um, that's being abused statistically, they say it takes them like seven times to actually leave an abusive partner, um, because you'll keep going back because you think things are going to be different, or, you know, you're financially dependent on them, or you have kids together. You know, there's a lot of reasons, and a lot of people like to judge um, people who are in abusive relationships, but honestly, if you're not in them, you don't know, like, how hard it can be to leave, um, especially if you've been like me, where you've kind of been raised in such unhealthy way, like, your whole life, that you don't know, like, what is a normal relationship, like, I always thought it was normal to yell and scream all the time at your significant other. And then I realized as I got older, like, that's not normal. <sighs> Anyways. So, um, so yeah, so eventually I did wind up leaving him and he did everything he could to try and get me back. And honestly... That's probably what, if you're with somebody who's abusive, they're probably going to do the same thing. They're going to make 
all these promises to you. They're going to suddenly be nicer to you. Um, but it's never, the, the reason you can tell they're never going to change is because it's never going to really last. Um, like they'll be nice for like, I don't know, three days and then they'll snap back to their old behavior. <clears throat> also, he would make threats. Like he would tell me like, I'm going to kill you. And then he would start laughing and it was really, it was really creepy. And I was scared because he did have like weapons that he would collect. Um, so that's another like thing that they might do is try to scare you into going back to them. But I had already made up my mind and, you know, I, I also prayed for strength. And it was very hard because we had been together for almost three years. It was the first time I ever lived with um, a man. And we had gone through a lot together. I was also kind of isolated um, as far as friends go. Um, I was, you know, constantly just doing school stuff because I had, I had one degree, but I had two minors. And I was getting honors in college um so I was like I basically had no life between school and working I also worked a lot <clears throat> so that also didn't help things so again it that's another thing you want to look out for is if you're isolated because you know you're always working or you're in you're in school you just got a lot of things on your plate you're at risk to be in an abusive relationship Okay, so anyways, um, eventually we did go our separate ways, and even after I, even after he fin, I finally moved out of the apartment we had together, which, by the way, he wouldn't leave even though he wasn't on the lease, and um, I wish I would have called the police, and I, I recommend doing that. Honestly, if you're in an abusive relationship and they're not leaving and they're not on the lease, they have no right to like hold you hostage um, until you move out. But that's what he did. And it was my fault for, in a way, letting him because I didn't want to get the police involved. Um, but there's no shame in that. They're used to um, dealing with crap like that. So if you need to get the police involved, I would, because he never left and until I finally moved out when my lease was up. But anyways, yeah, so even after I moved out, he knew I was in a new relationship. He still somehow found me on campus, because we went to the same college, and one day he found me on campus. Um, I don't know if I don't know if it's just a coincidence or if he was following me. I don't know. But he bumped into me at a restaurant off campus and <clears throat> and invited me to lunch and was like, I'll pay for everything. It would be just like old times because we used to go to that restaurant together. And um, I just kind of made up excuses. And I think he knew I was lying because I... I'm a bad liar, but anyway, like, I told him I had to work, and then I was like, oh, I gotta get home to study, but anyways, um, yeah, so that was, I think, one of the last times I seen him, and it's been years, and I'm so glad now that I, that I left him, you know, now I'm married, I'm in a normal, healthy relationship, and I look back and I'm like, thank God, because if we would have had kids together or gotten married, it would have been even harder to get out. But just know if it doesn't matter if you have kids together, if you have five houses together, if you have three dogs, whatever the case is, you can get out. There have been people who, there have been women and men who have left relationships as hard as hard as it gets the more involved you are with the person um you can do it you can be strong and I'm um, just sending my message I was I wasn't even that old when I left him like I didn't I wasn't even that mature yet but I knew I needed to get out and I recommend the sooner the better um there are resources out there um and yeah so I'm just trying to 
<clears throat> spread light on that. And also, if you're a friend or family member of somebody who's in an abusive relationship, I recommend not just demonizing the, their abusive partner and being like, oh, you got to break up with them. You got to leave. Because chances are it's going to take a long time for that person to finally get so fed up that they leave that person. Um, so I just, and then you might wind up burning the bridge like me and my friend had that falling out. I recommend just like as frustrating as it is, um, being supportive of the, of um, your friend or family member until they finally realize they need to leave because nobody can make somebody leave a relationship. They have to come to that realization. Um, but I do recommend, you know, not, not, um, supporting the relationship, not being like, oh, they're so great. When obviously that person is abusive, like saying things like, saying thing like pointing out to them like oh how does that make you feel when they do that like but not but saying it in that way not being like oh that person's such a jerk that person's such a scumbag loser why haven't you broken up with them like try to come from a non-judgmental place and just be as supportive as you can because that person needs support um and eventually I do have hope that that person will leave them um like me I did leave my abusive relationship and I haven't <laughs> I haven't looked back and I'm very happy that I found somebody who treats me right isn't abusive um in any ways and oh one other thing too you might you might be in an abusive relationship also if your significant other not just emotionally or physically abuse you, but they might sexually abuse you. Uh, my ex, one, one, on one occasion, he did actually abuse me in that way. Um, it was after we had broken up, and I guess he still wanted, like, control over me or something because I kept, you know, avoiding or denying his like requests for stuff like that after we'd broken up and we but we were still living together um so I think eventually he just got fed up and he still wouldn't control me so he didn't listen to me and he did something that was like that was wrong um it wasn't rape but it was very it was, it wasn't okay. I would say it was, like, a form of assault. Just, yeah. And that's why I recommend, too, that you get the police involved because you don't want to be living with somebody when you're done in an abusive relationship because they probably will try to do something like that. I'm sorry, but that might happen if you're, if you continue to live with them for a long time. So, like, <clears throat> that's just a warning that I wanted to give out. Okay, anyway, this video has turned into a really long video, and I was kind of rambling, but I hope that this kind of sheds some light on what it's like to be in an abusive relationship, um, like red flags and warnings as far as what to look for that the person might be abusive or warnings that you might be susceptible to that kind of relationship. Um, okay, so if you can relate, I hope that you like this video and you subscribe. Um, also, um, feel free to comment below. Thank you.